Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from South for More, it's Leo speaking. Today, let's get started with using Terra Pro. As um, I showed you in a previous video, it's uh, a fantastic synth with an amazing sound. But in this tutorial, we are going to go through initially the user interface to get accustomed to how it works. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Okay, so the first thing I would like you to do is to click up here where you see the list of presets and you can see the normal list of presets there, which says factory there. And you have option to create a new one, to create a new folder, a save, and also to um, export. Now, if you go up here, on click on Preset, you can see the folders for Factory, Terra Legacy, User, and Experimental. So you click on Users and then click Plus, the sign, and let's type something like SFM Test. Okay? And then click on New. Okay, this is what you see as a new initialize uh, patch or preset. Okay, let's start from the top. If you click down here, up here, on the left hand side, you get to the effectively the about of the synth. The Terra uh, window, the main one, this is where you see all your different components. This is where you do the majority of the work. Then you have a NARP section. And if you are familiar with previous apps from the same developers, you should uh, see this as being a familiar window, similar to the effects as well. And if you come from uh, um, apps like other station, you can probably see a resemblance in terms of the controls. As I mentioned here in the middle, you have the presets that you can select. You can click on it and then go um, to see the list of presets, create a new one, create a new folder, save it one, and also export it as well. You can go to the previous preset, clicking on here, and to the next one. Clicking on the right uh, arrow. You, where, if you click where it says A here, you can choose uh, um, how to split or stack layers. And I will see that in the next tutorial. Here you see the percentage utilization. This dice is here to allow you to um, randomize the creation of a patch, really. Then if you click here on the red lines, um, you have access to the previous audio recording. Then if you click on a cassette, you can start the audio recording. And when you finish the course, they will appear in the audio recording list. Then you have a cog symbol or image. This is where you set your background audio, your sample rate, your ableton link. If you want to do a MIDI clock synth, if you want to do MIDI learn mode, if you want to connect it to an external Bluetooth MIDI, and then you can set also the channel, if you have MPE beach band, and also the maximum polyphony, which is really nice, up to 128 voltages, which is really, really nice. Next, you have access here to a question mark, which gives you um, uh, little tips on how things work on the screen, but more importantly, gives you access down here to open the user manual. Okay, let's go back to the Terra uh, main screen. Uh, down here, you see a symbol, another cog. Click on it. This is where you can quantize the key. So if you have that um, not active, when you move from one key to the other, it will slide. But if you have that uh, active instead, it will quantize. Nice and simple. We have key hold to hold the notes. Nice and simple. And then you can choose the bass note and also the scale, like for example, I don't know, uh, diatonic minor and press done and it will change the keywords. Really nice. You can go here with this arrow below an octave and with the opposite one up an octave, okay? And you can see the symbols of the notes below for the keyboard. Now, I'm running these in standalone mode, but of course you can run it also as an AUV3 inside your preferred host, like um, AUM, Cubases, etc., etc. Okay, so let's start to work in um, with the main interface, okay? As you can see here, you have a common area, you have three oscillators, a mixer, a filter, and uh, an amplitude uh, module. Okay, this is the first thing you need to learn. If you click, for example, on a symbol where it says sort of, it gives you access to a menu. And you have also sub-menu, like for example, format there, or vocal, etc. So you have a huge number of waveforms. 
is really nice. So let's say triangle, okay? You click outside, of course, to uh, close that window. Now you hear, of course, three oscillators. One is with a triangle waveform, and the other two have a saw tooth waveform. Okay, I'm not going to go through all the different controls as a first tutorial, but I just wanted to give you a flavor of how the interface works. Down below this one, you can see there is an LFO, which is active, says LFO1. If you click on it, you can choose a different source for modulation. Okay? And, um, and that's important because you might decide, for example, to have an ADSR instead of an LFO. Now, if you want to see the parameter for that LFO, you need to click and hold, and it will open the parameter for that LFO. In this case, you can choose the different waveforms, the rate, the synchronization, and also the level. Now, click again on LFO1 to close the settings uh, of the different parameters for the LFO. Now, let's say um, if you click and hold the note, you don't hear that LFO operating. And that's because you need to m click and hold and move up here the level um, that you apply for the LFO1 on the pitch for uh, the oscillator one. Now you start to hear it, right? Let's set this a maximum. And let's click and hold, for example, and decrease the rate. Uh, let's make it a little bit faster. And now you hear the LFO which has been applied, okay? Double click and it go back to zero. And double click works on uh, all uh, uh, the controls, okay? Now, let's have a look at this mixer. You can see that it has a placeholder here for oscillator one. And so that means it connects with oscillator one. This one says oscillator two, and you see the different levels as well. So you have three oscillators connected to the mixer and also a white noise. So click on the white and set it to open. Okay, you make that disconnection. Click on oscillator three and set it to open. And in this case, oscillator three will disappear. Do the same on oscillator two, and now, you have only one oscillator with a triangle waveform going through the mixer. Now you might just say, why having the filter here that is taking the output from the mixer and then the amplitude module for where, where you have the ADSR also applied takes the um, output from the filter. So you can go to the amplitude mode module here, click on filter one and say, takes the output from the oscillator one. In that case, the mixer and the filter disappears, okay? And if we play now, now you hear only the triangle from oscillator number one, okay? And if we click an hold on ADSR1 here, you can, for example, change the attack. Or the release. So as I let go, you can hear that release is still ongoing. Let's click on DSR on ADSR one again. Now let's say that I want to reintroduce some modules. So how do I do that? Well, okay. Let's say that the amplitude module takes the input instead uh, or the output not from oscillator number one, but from a filter. So let's go down and let's choose filter one. Now that filter will bring in the mixer also because the filter one is still configured to go to take the output from the mixer. Now, if you want to remove the mixer because there is only one oscillator, well, go where it says here mixer, filter one, okay? And choose oscillator number one. In that case, oscillator number one output goes to filter one um, input, and then the output of filter one goes to the input of the amp uh, module, okay? And now, for example, instead of the a ADSR, you click on it, you choose, for example, an LFO, like LFO1, okay? And um, you just give it a little bit of level against the, the uh, cutoff. And you can hear the LFO acting on the filter cutoff. Click on a, and hold on LFO1 and change, for example, the rate. Again, click on LFO1 to close that. And again, if you don't want the LFO1 being applied to the pitch of oscillator 1, click on it and set no modulation. And there you go. Just a simple oscillator with a triangle waveform 
which for which the exit or the output goes to the filter and then the output of the filter goes to the amplitude mm, module. Okay, so hopefully that gives you an initial understanding of how the interface works in Terra Pro. I think you will agree with me, it is very simple, straightforward, and uh, as always, I hope you found this useful and you enjoyed, and I'll see you at the next video. Thank you, bye.